Welcome back to Talk Shop Tuesday. I am so happy to see you guys this week. We're going to talk about how to make money with no money. Okay, I'm kidding. We're going to talk about buying real estate when you don't have much money and how to get started with a little money. Now, you don't only have to buy real estate. There are other avenues to making money through real estate without buying it. But I'm an, a principal and I like to buy. Uh, I like that long-term hold type of real estate. And everybody that I talk to knows that I started with $50,000 of my own money. Uh, and I borrowed some money from friends, family, hard money. Uh, it got me accelerated to get to where I am today. So I'm excited to share with you guys four different avenues that I've quickly outlined on how to make money in real estate with little or no money. Let's get started. So the first one I want to touch on is buying with seller financing. This is going a little deep, pretty fast. You have to get creative. You have to be sharp. You have to know how to talk to people when pitching this. You have to understand how mortgages work and amortization schedules. And we'll get into that right now. So I've done this before. I bought a house for $360,000. Uh, I bought a house for $380,000 with a $360,000 private mortgage from the seller. So I gave him $20,000 at the closing table plus $20,000 in closing costs, which brought me to uh, $40,000 out of pocket at the closing. Now I went into these apartments, touched it up a little bit, not much and uh, raised the rents dramatically. It was actually vacant. So I doubled the rents that he was getting, which was totally market rate. And uh, I'm yielding out of there right now, $51,000 a year, NOI, also known as net operating income, which is my profit. Now, of course there's a mortgage on that property. So that private mortgage is for $360,000 at 3% for 30 years amortized. Amortized means it's broken up throughout those 30 years. Like I have 30 years to pay back the loan uh, because there is no arm in this transaction. There is no balloon payment that's due. So right now my principal and interest comes out to $18,213.24 a year. My net operating income is $51,000. So deduct my debt service, which is how much I pay in the mortgage every month annualized by how much I make in profit. And my net operating income after debt service is exactly $32,786.76. That's my profit to my pocket, over $2,500 a month. I didn't want to break down and go into details on the miscellaneous expenses, the vacancy factor, uh, how much maintenance costs are, everything. I do that in other videos. This is a high level overview of how to make money without much money. So I was all in for a little bit over $40,000 and that's bringing me in 30, almost $33,000 a year. That's option number one. Option number two is buying as a first time home buyer. Now this is the most common avenue I see in buying real estate with little money. If you buy as a first time home buyer, you could get away sometimes with putting away 5% down and then rolling over your closing costs into that transaction. So assuming another 5%. And now let's assume you buy a $380,000 house just the way I did. You'd be coming up with uh, $20,000 out of pocket, give or take for argument's sake, at the closing table, which is not much. $20,000 and you're going to be yielding, assuming the rate's exactly the same at 3%, you're going to be yielding the same thing that I'm yielding after debt service on that same property, which is over $30,000 a year. That's a home run. That cash on cash is almost 100%. That's craziness. Also unheard of. But that's what finding deals are, getting creative and uh, maybe subleasing out rooms. You know, you have to sacrifice in the beginning, subleasing out rooms um, while you're living there or you're renting out two units and trying to find the best tenants possible or, you know, I don't know, there's so many ways. Le leasing out the garage, uh, leasing out the storage space, like the outside, there's so many ways to capitalize on properties. Uh, mine just happens to be a two family. I don't have to live there and I don't live there. So uh, I get to reap the maximum benefits from that two family. I also have a large garage over there, which is where I store all my materials and tools and everything in this one specific property, which makes my life way easier. Saves me on storage costs as I've been scaling. Number three, buying with a mortgage and borrowing the money from people you know. 
Let's assume you're a Robinhood day trader and you have $50,000 in Robinhood. Now you're a nurse, teacher, I don't know, physical therapist, trainer. So you're making some good money. You're making sixty dollars to $100,000 a year, assuming, for a few years in a row. You're 25 years old. You've been working that job for three years. You have that income. You could show that W-2, 1099, whatever it is. Uh, as your income and now you go to a bank or your mortgage broker and show them this and they say hey you're approved for four hundred thousand dollars but let's say you already bought your first home so now you need to come up with 25 percent out of pocket on four hundred thousand dollars that's a hundred grand let you want to keep your money in your robin hood day trading account because you're a beast and you think you're going to be like the bar stool guy good for you so you need to raise that hundred thousand dollars now guys there's no way to raise money without risk there is always an underlying risk. You're always going to have to learn and understand how mortgages work, payment schedules, leasing works. If you're not interested in that, then there's no reason for you to get into the real estate space. You're doing this for that passive income or to flip a property and make that quick capital gain money. So if you have to raise $100,000, maybe you have five friends of 20,000 each doing something similar. You raise 20,000 from each of them and you could give them a private mortgage on the side, maybe with five, six, 7% interest on their money. They'll be happier with their money in real estate than sitting in the bank. Or they could become your partners. I mean, there are some banks that allow you to do this, others that don't, it's like a gray area, it's iffy. I've never done it, but I've seen it done and um, and I think it's a great way to just keep growing your real estate portfolio with strategic partners and, and keep that passive income growing. At the end of the day, you guys all have the same goal, so there's no reason your, vis your vision shouldn't be aligned. And $20,000 for five people isn't life-changing. What's life-changing is adding up that income, even if that yields them $300 a month um, for a few years or for the rest of their lives and you get some sort of management fee and you're a partner, that's huge. You bring in that value as their real estate uh, manager and developer and principal and they bring in that value with that money that they're providing for you. Especially if you're in New, you're in New York. Everybody seems to have money in New York. I was out on the boat yesterday. I swear, uh, pandemic, no pandemic, people, it's like everybody has money all of a sudden. It's blowing my mind. Number four, partnering with other people and borrowing their money. This is going to touch on exactly what I just outlined for you guys, but not necessarily borrowing from five people $20,000 each. This is going out, raising hard money, which I had a video I talked about hard money last Talk Shop Tuesday. Um, the raising money from hard money, 90% uh, loan to value, and you're coming up with 10% out of pocket, there obviously is an underlying risk. You're signing a personal guarantee. And if you don't have that 10%, you might have to get that from somewhere else or team up with a contractor or somebody that's done real estate before. People have come to me and tried to team up with me on uh, buying real estate and they've shown me their competitive edge. And I'm actually doing one deal right now with somebody else out of state that has a competitive advantage over me in that state. And I'm really excited to partner up with him because he provide, he showed me that value. And now I'm bringing my value to the table, which is coming in the form of money. And, uh, and we're going to partner up and I'm excited about it. It's going to be a new adventure, a new business venture out of state. So that's really the four core ways of buying real estate without much money. There are other ways like subleasing properties, uh, Airbnb business. I know people that go out, sign contracts on a property in God only knows where, some beachfront property, let's say in Fire Island. Uh, they lock up a lease for say $10,000 a month and they're going on Airbnb, renting it out for $1,000 a night and they're getting away with, you know, maybe making a net profit of three to $5,000 a month. That's a real hustler way of making money with real estate and there is nothing wrong with that. I applaud it. There's a much bigger risk doing that than buying multifamily real estate and just renting it out. So there are plenty of ways to make money without having tons of money and getting started with no money is totally doable in real estate, although you almost always need money. So you have to find the places to get that from. Once you understand how money works and where to get it from and all those things, real estate really becomes much easier. Then you move on to the next obstacle, which is generally maintenance and construction and everything. And then from then on, it becomes the management and scaling. 
So once you pass those certain thresholds, you'll be really happy with yourself and where real estate can take you. It really is life changing. And I hope this provided some value. It's a brief talk shop Tuesday. Hope you learned something. Peace.